Psalms 142 tonight. What a desire to be in the house of God. You know, we look at that story between the rich man and Lazarus. And when his day was over with, that's what he wanted Lazarus to go back and do was tell his family, his brethren, that they might flee this awful place. Church, it ought to be our desire to tell men about Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalms 142 in verse number 1. And David said, And I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him, I showed, I shewed before him my trouble. And when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked, have, I, have they privately laid a snare for me. And I looked on my right hand, and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, and no man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, and I said, Thou art my refuge, and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from the persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name and thy righteous shall compass me about for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Would you pray with us tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord once again for this privilege and opportunity God that we have to be here on this Wednesday evening. I pray God now that you would anoint these lips of clay God one more time to preach this holy word. I pray God direct our speech tonight and our words and Lord we thank you for the Holy Spirit that we feel in our midst tonight. I pray God just to work a work, Lord, and may your word flow out, God, to wherever it needs to be, Lord, to that one that needs to hear it tonight. May the good seed, the word of God, fall upon teal, plowed, fertile ground tonight. God, did it not only just fall there, but that it bring forth a harvest, God, that would glorify you. I ask tonight, God, that you just work in every life that's here tonight and those, God, that will somewhere where hear this word and we ask these things in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated tonight thank you for honoring the word of God David said Lord I have cried unto thee he said, Make haste unto me. This is Psalms 141. He said, Make haste unto me. Give an ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. He said, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense and the lifting up of mine hands as the evening sacrifice. You can read through the Psalms throughout different places in the Psalms and you will find where David, just like you and I, has cried out many times unto the Lord. I can look back if there was a story of my life and if there was a uh, maybe a, somewhere been kept up a record here on earth you could look back a many a time when I cried out more so like the, the words of the psalmist David here I've cried out with my whole heart I've cried out oh God I just need you to move and I found him to be faithful church I, I found God to work in our situations and in our lives and in things that go on in day to day life David realized where his strength lay. David realized where he got what he had from. And he realized not only that, but he realized where his refuge was. Outside these four walls tonight and out from under this roof, everybody in here can hear the thunder rolling, the rain beating down out there upon the ground and doing very hard so seemingly right now. But I can tell you something, church, on the inside of this building tonight. We're dry. We're in here away from the elements. What is this building to you and I right now? This building is a refuge from the storm that's coming down on the outside out there. In here there's a calm. In here we can, we're only hearing the roar of the thunder and the noise of the rain. But out there it's beating down very hard. David
David realized where he was sheltered at. He realized where his comfort was and it wasn't in the things of this world but his shelter, his leaning spot, his refuge was in the Lord. Can you say amen? David realized that everything that he needed lied within the hand of an almighty God and David realized and said it throughout the Psalms and other places in the word of God. He said and I will praise him. David had a prayer life of consistency. He said in Psalms 42 and 1 he said I cried unto the Lord in my voice with my voice and with the voice unto with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. He said I poured out my complaint before him and I show and I shoot before him my trouble. What's he saying there? I told the Lord just exactly what I was going through. That's just good old Arkansas English tonight. He said, Lord, I'm going through a spot here and I need you in it. That's exactly the way you and I are at times. Things come along and we get down and we begin to talk to God. I learned a long time ago, saint of God, you don't got to have big flattering words to talk to God. He'll accept the word that you bring to him if you bring it to him in a pure heart. When you get down, humble yourself before him and just begin to talk to him and begin to tell him exactly what's going on. Listen, it's not a surprise to him. He knows it anyway, but he's listening. He's got an ear tonight for you and I. Not only that, but a heart of love as well. David said, I poured out my complaint or my trouble, my trial that I'm in before the Lord and the Lord heard my supplication. Saint of God, I begin to think about that this afternoon and this morning as well. Got up early and read these Psalms this morning. David said, for when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. Listen to that. Listen to what he's saying there. He said, when it was all without out of my doing, he said, my spirit was down, everything was down within me, but he said, thou knewest my path in the way privately. He said, wherein I walked, had they privately laid a snare for me. What's David saying? He said, there's an enemy out there that's doing everything they can to destroy me. These people that rose up against him, they were there. I was thinking about David this morning when I was reading through the Psalms. I was thinking about what a true man of God this guy was. And all of the days Saul was trying to do away with him. All the things that he came against him with, David still stayed true to God and he still loved the Lord with all of his heart. Listen, saying to God, this man, this psalmist that we're reading about, preaching to you about tonight, was hunted like a common animal by his enemy. That man was doing everything he could to kill David, but David still walked on with God, still served the Lord. Why? Because he knew whom his God was. David said very plainly, here he said, they've, been, they've laid a snare for me. There's people trying very much to destroy me, but still, he said, he said, for when my spirit's overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. Amen. How many times, church, have you just got down to where you couldn't go not one more step? When you couldn't go, you couldn't put that foot in front of the other all of somewhere, wherever you may have been, you just fell before God and got on the got a hold of God, laid a hold of the throne room of heaven and began to cry out, amen, and began to talk to God. All of a sudden, there was a peace roll in your spirit. There was something begin to churn on the inside and you knew that God's working right in the midst of this. You knew that the Lord's going to move. You knew that God's going to see us through. You see, saint of God, he knew the path, amen, he knew the place where you were. Even though there was an enemy out there that knew where David was, they was trying to destroy him. God knew where he was as well. And God was looking out for him, moving in his life and touching him and lifting him up just like he has for you and I many times through life, many times through this thing. And he said, for within me, he said, then thou knewest my path. And he said, and wherein I walked. I can tell you something, God knows where you're walking at tonight. God knows the place where you're at and he knows wherein you're walking at. 
It may be a rough place right now. It may be a place maybe deeper in this thing that you've ever been in all of your life. You're wandering around thinking, how in the world will I get through? I can tell you something, friend. There's times in life you walk and you feel like you've walked all along. There's times along this walk when, 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 you, when you don't feel like there's anybody around or anybody could know or would know or does know or even care. But I can tell you there's one that knows. There's one that's already been down the road your own because he's gone before you, the Bible says. I can tell you something tonight, friend, he cares very much so. He cares about the things that's in your life and the problems that's there and the hardships that's there and the trials that's there. Not only does he care about them, he will take care of them if you and I will trust him and walk with him and go on and believe and, and have a relationship with him. Not only will he do all of that, but he loves you. Amen. He loves you. You know, sometimes it just is good to know that somebody loves you. When you speak down in that valley when you don't feel like you can go one more step farther than to know somebody there. To know that somebody is in the mist right where I need them at the most important time in my life. I can tell you this tonight. He's a comforter that will come on the scene when nobody else can be there. When nobody else can comfort. He's one that moves in your life and brings a sense of comfort that no human being can ever bring to you. He's one that'll be there when nobody else is there. He's one that has been there when nobody else was there. He's one that'll lift you up that he knows the innermost being, the innermost thought of your heart and he knows and he understands. You see, he knows the place right where you're walking tonight. And he knows exactly the trouble that you're in and the problems that's there and, and the heartaches that's there. But he's asking you this. He's asking you and I as I look through this tonight. David said, my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Have you ever been there? Has it ever got more than you could bear? Has it ever got to the place it was more of a load than you could carry? I can tell you something, friend. If you hadn't been there, hang around. Hang around a little while. Because after a while, it'll get you with just through the just the, the rigors of life. Sometimes it gets more seemingly than we can bear, especially when we try to handle it ourselves. That's usually when the load gets to the point we can't bear it. But I learned something. He'll carry my load for me. I said he'd carry my load for me back in the fall of the year. Me and Brother Scott back here, we took off one morning from his farm there at Pelser. And I don't remember, he can correct me, but I'm probably 8.30 or 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. It wasn't too late in the day, but it wasn't real, real early. We took off and we rode all day long. Very few times throughout that day, very, very few, we got off of our mules. Very few times, with just the exception of two or three or four times. We come back that afternoon, we'd rode, we'd rode that whole circle, come back up out there, riding up out under the mountain down there from the farm <coughs> coming back up through there and, and we, we knew where we were kind of but we neither one were 100% sure where we would come out it's just as steep as it could be I rode my mule to the, up to the right up to the first big flat that we come on come to and I got down off of her I could tell she'd gotten weak and I got back off of her and I turned around and I looked at her and I, and I felt sorry for her I thought oh girl you've carried me all day long You've been good. You've done a good job. You've carried me. I'll lead you now for a while. I'll get off and I'll lead you for a while. I got off and I led her for a long ways about through there. And it was just as if when I got off from her, you could just almost see that there was a relief there. She'd pack me all day long. I can tell you something. Sometimes, saint of God, we carry a load for months and years, even on end. And it doesn't seem like there'll be any relief, but I can tell you when you begin 
begin to trust in God, when you begin to rely upon Him, and when you will let Him carry the load, I want you to know something. He will carry the load for you. Amen? He will have a spot that you could come to and say, Lord, here it is. I want you, Jesus, to take this from me, this, this load that I'm carrying. I want you, Lord, to bear this for me. Listen, saint of God, David said here in this, he said, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, I can tell you, David's come to the place, Lord, I don't know if I can go on. He said, then thou knewest my path. Amen. Aren't you glad that he knows where you're at? It said, for in the way wherein I walked, have they privately laid a snare for me? He said, I looked on my, now notice this, now notice where David's at here. He said, I looked on my right hand and I beheld, but there was what? There was no man that would know me. Now notice that right there. He said, there's no man that would know me. And he said, in refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. Now I want you to look at this. David said, and I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. What's he saying there? It wasn't that they didn't know him. It's that they wouldn't know him. Now think about that. It's not that they didn't know him. It's that they wouldn't know him. David said, I've looked on my right hand and I'm looking down at people. I'm looking in the eyes of people that know me. But they will not know me. You can sense his hurt. What is this? This is people that he knew. This is possibly family. This is friends. This is someone that should be helping me. But David said, no man would know me. No man would know me. And he said, every place where there was a refuge, he said, the refuge failed me. He said, on my right hand, and I beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, and, no, and he said, and no man cared for my soul. Now let's, let's back up to verse 3. He said, for when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. For in the way wherein I have walked, have they privately laid a snare for me? I looked on my right hand, and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. But notice what David says in verse 5. I cried unto thee, O Lord, and I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of of the living. I want you to notice this. Verse 1, David said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Verse 5, David said, I cried unto the Lord. And I said, Thou art my refuge. What did he say in verse 4? He said, for, the, for no man would know me. And he said, Refuge fail me, because no man cared for me. But he said, Lord... You are my refuge. I can tell you something tonight. He's your refuge, friend. He's my refuge tonight. There have been a many a time in this preacher's life that I didn't feel like there was anybody in the world around me that cared or anybody around me that understood. But I knew this much. I had a friend and his name was Jesus. And I knew that in him... He was my refuge. He was the calm all in the midst of the storm. I can never preach about a refuge. And I've, I've used this, I've told this a, countless times. But I can never preach about a refuge without my mind going back to a happenstance in my life. Been about 13 years ago. Would have been 12 years ago this last fall. Going into 13. I was, I was deer hunting and it was raining just about like it was out there five minutes ago or 10 when it was raining so hard. It was just white in there where I was. Just the, just the hill was just 
raining so hard. It was just like it was just white on that hill, just so hard you couldn't even see through the rain. Water just rolling off them hills. I'd set out in it all day long. It's about 1 o'clock, 12.30 or 1 o'clock, and I went down there and got up and under a little old ledge and under a bluff. He's drying under there. I pulled my old wet rain, rain gear off and I soaked underneath that, laid my gun down, dried my scope off, laid everything down there and I had a, a little bit of lunch there and I just sat up there and under that, under that ledge and I ate lunch there sitting up and under that ledge up on side of that bluff. It just pouring and spilling. And I thought to myself, I sat there and I thought, I don't want to get back out in this. It feels good to just sit here. It's dry and under here. It feels good to just sit here. Out from under that rain beating me in the face. This feels good. I sat there for probably an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes or so. And I began to pick everything back up. I said, well, I don't want to get back out in this, but I got to because I'm not home yet. And God began to reveal that to me. There's places in life that it seems like the storms of life get more than we can possibly bear. But we got to have a made up mind that I'm going to get up and I'm going to go on because I'm not home yet. You see, saint of God, between this, the way of the cradle and the way of the grave and between there and between time we get to heaven by the way of the air, however it comes, we must continue on. Do you know why? Because you're only a pilgrim here. You're only a stranger in this land. This world, this place that we inhabit, this things that we call ours and things that we call home, we're only caretakers of that. This is not home. You come into this world, you, when you come into this world, you might have been born into a family that had plenty. You might have been born into a family that didn't have anything. But I can tell you this much, it doesn't matter whether you got plenty or whether you didn't have anything. One of these days, we're going to breathe one last breath if we go by the way of the grave. That is, we're going to breathe one last breath. We're going to take that breath. It's going to be the last one that we ever had in this body to inhale and to exhale, and we're going to die. And everything around you and I that we have or have had are temporal. You see, they're not yours. You didn't take not one bit of dirt with you. You didn't take any material thing with you at that last breath. But what's Jesus saying? Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Think about that with me. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. You see, down here you didn't have anything. But what's he saying? He's saying, there you got something. Why? Because I'm going away to prepare a place for you. That where, that, he said, for where I am, there you may be also. Jesus is preparing a place for you. You see, my friend, everything that we got down here, everything you touch, every, every one of us has got a place that we call our home. There's not anything wrong with that. But really, and let's just look at it and be realistic. It's not ours. Brother Jerry, that old farm over on that creek was somebody else's one day. And if I breathe my last breath here tonight, it'll be somebody else's again. It was somebody else's before mine. And if I die and leave here, it's going to be somebody else's again. You see, saint of God, there's not anything that we've got our hand laid to that's really ours. But Jesus said what? I'm going to prepare a place for you. That's yours. That's something that's yours. That's something that's mine. That's something that if we'll continue to walk in the faith and keep the faith and to go on and to make our call and election sure, that's something that's guaranteed to ours. It says this in Proverbs 5 and 21. I, I've got it wrote down, but I, I want to back over here and read it out of the Word tonight. It's just real close to where we are in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 21. I don't, I don't want to misread it and my notes be off here. It says this in verse 21. He said, For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all of his goings. 
His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. For he shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of the folly he shall go astray. But notice what verse 21 said. It said, For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all of his going. You see, friend, when you thought you was out there in this world all alone, when you thought there wasn't nobody around you, listen to 21, verse 21. It says, For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all of his goings, and his iniquities, and his iniquities shall take away, and, his, and the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all of his goings. You see, God knows the ways of a man. God knows exactly where a man is. God knows that. And we must have a vision, saint of God. Before we, the Bible said this, it says, Without a vision, people perish for the lack of that. You see, God's a deliverer tonight. He says in 2 Samuel 22 and verse 2, And he said, And he said unto the Lord, My rock and my fortress and my deliverer, and even to your old age, for I am he that even the whore hair will carry you. For I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Jeremiah 1 and 8 says, And be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Lord, for he delivereth and he rescueth and he worketh signs and wonders in the heavens and the earth for who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Psalm 73 and 26 he writes and he said for my flesh and my heart faileth but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. David knew who his strength was. David knew what he needed from God. David knew where everything that he had lay. David knew that. But I can ask us tonight the simple question, what do we trust in? What do we put our faith in? What are we, resi what are we relying upon? If you can say anything other than God, we're missing it somewhere. Because He's the only thing that will see you through this life and He's the only thing that will get you through to the next life to come. You see, folks, there's people in this world out there, and this is a sad statement to make, but there's people in this world tonight that don't give the things of God. They don't even give it a thought. They live their life like there's no tomorrow, like there's no ending, like they're going to have this thing forever. And many of them seemingly have no care whatsoever about that. But this is the bottom line. You see, this walk of life somewhere along the way will come to an ending, whether it be by the way of the grave or for the child of God. If the Lord comes back, it can be by the way of the air. But one way or the other, we're leaving this walk here. I got this question tonight and we're coming to a close. Where's your refuge at? You might look out there at life and you may think to yourself tonight, Brother, I've tried everything in the world, but I feel more alone today than I've ever felt in my life. Just want you to know something. You're not alone. You may feel alone. You're not alone. People in this walk of life, sometimes you see that's a lie that the enemy puts in the mind of a believer, puts in the mind of people, that there nobody in this world cares about you. That's a lie that Satan plants out there and deceives people with day after day after day. But I can tell you something tonight, you're not alone, and you won't be alone. Because Jesus said in his word, he said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. That's a promise that a child of God has. Christ will not leave us. Well, if anybody does any leaving, I want you to know who does the leaving. It's us. It's us. 
Because you see, you choose Him when you chose to get saved. When you chose to give your life to Christ. You chose to be saved. You chose. Jesus already paid the price. You put your faith in His works and what He's already done on the cross of Calvary. You chose that. person gets up and walks away from God. They've made that choice to go down that road themselves. It's a choice that they made. And I can tell you something tonight. If they'll choose to turn around and come back, He's a God that loves them. He's a God that knows the pathway that they're on. Not only that they're on, that every one that's going down wherever they may be, He's an all-knowing God knows everything. Not only does He know it, but He cares about you tonight. Heads is bowed with us this evening. Eyes is closed here this afternoon. Across this building. First and foremost tonight as we come to the close of this Wednesday evening service. I want to ask a question tonight. I, I know the, the hearts of everybody in here pretty much, but God's the only one that truly knows the heart. You do realize that. But I want to make or give an invitation tonight. I don't ever like to close a service without giving up anybody an opportunity to come to this altar and give their life to Jesus Christ. You may be sitting in this house tonight lost and undone without God and not right where you need to be. And you know that. But tonight you want to make a change in your life. Would you be willing to get up this evening and come to this altar and accept Jesus into your life? Would there be anybody tonight willing to just step out and say, Lord, I want you. I want you. Anywhere tonight.